Hello. Now we just give another step in the direction of a solution for, for convex optimization problems. Of course, before going to, to the details of our support vector machine uh, solution, we're going to find like the basics on interior point methods and then discuss on some, some simple solution for another problem, and then we go for the support vector machine. Fine. Now, I think it's really nice to just give you like some ideas about optimization. In the late, late ni uh, 1940s, uh, some, a guy named Danzig proposed the simplex method. That method, as we discussed before, was devoted to find a solution for linear optimization problems visiting corners of constraints. So at, at, each, at, at each iteration, iteration or every iteration, it uh, changed our basis in attempt to find the solution, the best vac vortex in our space containing several constraints. However, some other researchers were working on interior point methods. By interior point methods, uh, just remember that instead of visiting ver vertices, we are actually visiting the interior regions of our feasible set. Actually, we're going to walk inside such feasible region. So some guys working on that, von Neumann, Hoffman, at all and fresh, but actually uh, those interior point methods, uh, as I mentioned, they would traverse across the interior of the feasible region, and not just visit corners such as simplex. But that that, that it comes like a, a real problem on that. Uh, those algorithms needed to uh, deal with like such a time complexity to solve the problem, because instead of visiting just vertices, it was actually visiting several, an infinite number actually of points inside the feasible set. So time complexity was like a big problem at that point. And then uh, because of that, like people just decided to, to give up of uh, interior point methods when, when addressing practical scenarios and trying to sometimes relax, sometimes simplify problems and solve those as linear optimization problems and uh, apply, for example, the simplex algorithm. But in 84, 1984, Karmakar just presented a new method, a new interior point method. And that was like the main motivation or the algorithms that we use nowadays. Uh, that method allowed uh, the, first, uh, the first real applications. Okay? Guy et al. Came, came later and showed that a formal relationship between the new interior point method and the classical logarithmic barrier method was possible. So actually this, this uh, team of researchers just showed that there was a connection in between the logarithmic barrier and the inferior point method uh, just designed by Karmakar. We're going to see that this method uh, attend, uh, walks inside the feasible set, but it uses a, uh, let's say, like a trick to avoid touching constraints. So somehow, if I, uh, let's say I'm walking towards some, one of those constraints and maybe I could just transpass the constraint, leaving the feasible set, leaving the feasible region and going to some region that does not belong to my problem, some region that's not part of the domain of my solution. So that, that would be like a real, a real problem for, for me. So, of course, I could use some barriers. So, we're going to see that log functions are going to be used to create those barriers. 
So when I when I try to approach some barrier, some some constraint, uh, just consider there is like a wall that goes up to the infinite. So it's just impossible to traverse that wall. It's just impossible to cross that wall because when I try, I just like face it and I have to stop. So that's the way basically that Karma Car solved this problem. So consider we have this feasible region, okay? And here we have a linear constraint, another linear constraint, another linear constraint, of course, one here and one here. Given any number of linear constraints composing some feasible region, feasible set inside this place, they will always form a convex set. That's really interesting. If you go and, and study by the book, uh, of, uh, the book entitled Convex Optimization by Boyd and Vanderberg, you guys will see that independently of the, of the number of, of linear constraints that I have, if those define some feasible set, if some feasible region here, this region will always be a convex region. So if I connect two points with a line, the line will traverse inside, always inside my feasible set. Okay, just to get back that concept. Just consider that this linear constraint is a wall now. So I am inside here, I'm walking. When I, I come, I, I face the wall, I just stop. But actually, it's going to, to be a wall, not just like uh, out of nothing, out of the room. Actually, uh, my dog again. Sorry, guys. It's, it's more like a, a half pipe uh, used in skate, uh, like championships. I don't know. I, I don't know that much about skates, but anyway. But just consider we've got like a half pipe over here. So when you are arriving there, it starts increasing, increasing more, 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 more. And when you are really close, of course, it goes, it tends to go up into the infinite positive. Of course, that's the case if you are trying to solve a minimization problem. So, of course, if I make uh, an, a, a, somehow the limit, coming really close to this constraint, I go up to infinite positive, that is not the way I will use to solve my problem. I just avoid touching the constraint because it's like a wall. If I have a minimization problem, I will have that. But if I have a maximization problem, that's easier to see this constraint as a negative wall going to minus infinity. So it's like a, an infinite wall going down, uh, on the land, of course, going, uh, going down infinitely. So when you approach, it starts, it's the same half pipe, of course, you are just getting close and close and close and going down, of course. And if you go, if you go somehow on the constraint, you are just touching, going, of course, to minus infinity. And that's not the way of solving a maximization problem. So the way of seeing those constraints is exactly like a, let me show you, and then we got, we get, just get back. It's the same as seeing, oh, sorry guys, it's not in here, it's in a different set of, of slides, no problem. But it's the same as seeing a wall here, another wall, another wall here, another here, and finally another wall over here. So walls could go to infinite positive, and of course, that would be a problem if I try to minimize my, my solution and they could go to infinite negative, And that's a problem if I try to maximize my solution. Okay, we're going to draw those, um, those um, functions later, imagine the walls and everything. Okay, just giving some introduction on interior point methods. We also have, we have like three types of interior point methods, three relevant types. Of course, there are others, but those are like the most prominent uh, algorithms. The first was the potential reduction algorithm proposed by Karmarker, as I mentioned before. 
actually that's not uh, that was was not proposed by Karmakar, but it was motivated by the propositions by the design after Karmakar. Okay? We've got the affine scaling algorithm, which is uh, actually it is the simplest to to implement or one of the most simple ways of implementing the solutions. Okay. And we've got nowadays, like uh, the last more than, than one decade, maybe two decades, people working with path following algorithms. Those uh, nowadays like are uh, among the best solutions to, to solve, uh, or of course, to tackle convex optimization problems when we need to somehow walk inside the feasible set inside the feasible region defined by our constraints. In this, in this class, actually in, from this class on, we are going to discuss solutions based on the path following algorithm. Actually, I'm going to use with you guys a type of algorithm of interior point method called primal dual path following algorithm. What is the difference? Path following algorithms can solve just the, the primal or the dual, uh, depending on, on your, your optimization problem, and potential as well, or fine as well. When we talk about primal dual path following algorithms, we're talking about, about uh, methods that employ the primal space, trying, of course, to minimize our our solution for the support vector machine, for example, while at the same time we verify the dual, the dual space and verify if we are maximizing it. So it's really nice it's because it considers both spaces in conjunction. So I can just assess how distant the solution provided by the primary space is from the dual space. So we can just compare the spaces, compare the solutions, and understand how our problem has been tackled. Okay? That's really nice. Just consider this case, we've got this primal problem. This was a problem that we approached before. Uh, actually, I will solve it. It's a linear optimization problem, but I will address it using the primal dual path following algorithms for interior point methods. So you guys can, can just ask like, oh, is it possible to use interior point methods to solve linear optimization problems? Yeah, it's possible. It's not necessary. I can use something that's simple, like the simplex algorithm. I, it's not necessary to use something that walks inside the feasible set, inside the feasible region. But instead, I could use um, the simplex method. Of course, if I want to use an interior point method, I can. What is going to be the difference? If you guys remember, this, this was a problem that we addressed and solved in some, like some videos ago. I don't remember like how many. Actually, like I don't know, like six, five, six, I don't know. And the solution happens on this vertex over here, 10 thirds, 4 thirds. In our case, we're going to start in any place inside this feasible region and along the iterations, we are going to, co to converge to this vertex. So that, that's what happens with interior point method, method. And it's nice to see what's happening here and just give like a big picture in terms of a linear optimization problem, so then we can go for the support vector machine problem. I think it's just like a toy problem to understand how IPM works. And then we give a next step. Primal problems here, and of course, we could use the simplex to solve it. Uh, and solving it, we're going to have 10.66, and of course, forever, for our objective function, which is in here. And that happens at this point, 10 thirds, 4 thirds, as you guys can see here. 
that was a problem we approached before. Please go back if you don't remember. Our duo is here. This duo is written in terms of pi i, pi 2. Okay? Pi 1, sorry, and pi 2. And the constraints are here. Of course, I could use some simplex method to solve it. But instead, we are going to use the interior point method as a toy, just to understand how it works. Okay? And my solution would be here with one third for thirds, as seen before. So my solution would happen here, as you can see, one third for thirds, and the solution provides the same result, 10.666 forever. The same numerical result. That means we've got the strong duality. What's interesting here is we're going to use the interior point method and we can, uh, of course, the primal dual path, uh, dual path following algorithm, which is a way of solving uh, um, those, those problems based on, on, on convex uh, feasible sets that I can traverse the, the set, that I can walk inside the set uh, in the direction of my solution. And that's the same we're going to do with the support vector machine optimization problem. So, just observe how we refer, how axes refer to different variables in the primal and dual forms. Mm. Sorry, just getting back. Getting back once more. In this space, I'm working on x1 and x2, as you can see, my problem. In this second space, I am working on pi 1 and pi 2. That's a completely different space. What we are going to do in the next video is we are going to solve the, the primal dual path following interior point method considering both spaces. So we walk a little bit in this primal. Let's, let's say we are in here, for example where we are going to be here, maybe here, for example. Then we give another step towards the vertex, like here. And then what's happened here? We are going towards the solution over here too. And that's what we are going to see in the next video. See you guys.